Hi guys, Colsey, and today I'm bringing you a very special video. This video is actually sponsored by Touch Portal. Basically, I had this sort of idea of something that I wanted to do, a video I wanted to make, something I wanted to produce. And uh, I basically put the idea to Touch Portal. They were super down for the idea and they helped me fund this video, which I'm gonna show you guys today. Touch Portal is a great, great service, a great app that I've been using for a while now. Uh, you might have seen some of my other videos talking about Touch Portal, but I've been using it for a while now and I've been using it predominantly with just my phone. So I've been using the app on my phone to control my stream like you would do with a stream deck. So my personal problems with using my phone is one, it kills my phone and the battery dies and I don't have a charger in my office. I could put one in, but I don't wanna just kill my phone all the time. I need to use my phone for other things. Um, so being able to sit down and do a really long stream and have my phone there, I was like, yeah, it's, it, it works. It works perfectly fine, but I just wish I had another device that wasn't my phone like a dedicated device, kind of like Stream Deck is. Stream Decks are, you know, fairly expensive. They're about, what are they now? 120 pounds for like a Stream Deck, something like that. So they're fairly expensive. So I started thinking, pretty sure I could put together, I could buy and make myself my own dedicated touch portal device, much like a Stream Deck would be. And I bet I could do it for significantly less than it costs for a Stream Deck. So that's what I've done. With the help of Touchball, I've been able to do that, and I'm gonna talk you through uh, what I did, and maybe what you could do, and how you could probably get it even cheaper than me, or there's many, many different ways you could go about doing it. What I have done, I have this here, which you, pro you probably can't see. Let me just... Okay, right, just zoom the camera out a little bit. There we go. Right, so you might be able to see here, um, just sort of in the corner of the screen, this is what I have have a tablet now you know what we'll get talking about the stand and stuff later but that's what i have i have this tablet i can you know what let's just pop it out of here it takes two seconds right so this is what i have this is my touch ball device it's a 10 inch tablet it's a egl EG, egl tablet 10 inch tablet that's what i decided to go for now this thing was 50 pounds i believe when i bought it and basically i use it it purely stays in here in my office and it is a dedicated touch portal device, like you would have a Stream Deck. A Stream Deck does what a Stream Deck does. This, I just use it for touch portal. Now, you, obviously, it's an Android tablet. You can put games on it, you can do loads of other stuff with it. That's one of the beauties of this method, I think, is the fact that, yes, you can buy it and it can be a dedicated device, but also, it's a tablet. And you know what tablets do, they're the same. You can do anything you can do on a tablet on it, because it is a tablet. This was 50 pounds. Uh, the stand, and I bought another stand. So I have this big, like, goosenecky arm stand, which, like, let me... I've got this big, sort of, gooseneck. I think it's called a gooseneck. I don't really know. It's a big stand, and it's just clipped onto a little table by the side of me so that I can just reach and push the buttons there. Uh, you can also get a desk mount. I bought both of those. I think both of those added together were probably an extra £10. So in total, I've spent £60. I have two different stands for the for the tablet and I've got the tablet. The stand's actually really good. I know this isn't a video about the stand. It's about the touch portal. But the stand's pretty good. It's a little wobbly, so you know when you push the screen it wobbles a bit, but it's actually not that bad. Like the whole thing wobbles a bit, but it's, it's not a problem. It's not as if it's gonna fall over kind of wobbly. Right, so this is how it's gonna work. So obviously camera here. This is where I've been talking to. Also have the webcam and the whole stream set up, which is also being recorded. And I also am screen recording the tablet. I'm not sure how that screen recorder is going to work because I just had to download a free app because it didn't come with a pre-installed like screen recorder. So we'll see how that goes. With a little bit of work, you know, the same way you would do with the Stream Deck, you put in your work to make your buttons look nice. You create what functions you want it to do. I have done all that. I have been using this every stream and I had been anyway on my phone. I just wanted to make a special device that I could use it. This is just stays in here. I just charge it up when I'm finished. It's done. That's it. That's what this device does. There we go. I'm just gonna show you briefly, just so you know that it works and so that I'm not lying. We, I have the touch portal here on the dedicated device and I'll show you via the stream, the way that I might normally have my stream, how I use it. So, so I have four apps. I have uh, OBS Studio, Streamlabs OBS, Twitter and GIMP, which is a photo editing one. These are just the ones I use a 
occasionally. To be honest, the one I mainly use is uh, OBS Studio. So we'll go into OBS Studio. That's how I manage all my streams. So in here, we have a back button, obviously goes backwards. Um, then we've got one, two, three, four, five. Now these are just my five scenes. These are the scenes I use. Uh, bottom left, little sound that just mutes or unmutes, that toggles the mute and unmute of uh, all sound I have on the stream. So it's easy for when I start the stream, there's no sound playing, my mic is off, and then when I come live, I click that button, all the mic is, all the mics, all the mics, and audio sources and desktop sound and stuff like that all turns on, that's what I use that for. Uh, the media one above is just a little thing I use if I have a sponsored piece of content or a sponsored trailer or something I wanna show. Uh, I would just press that, it's again, it's a separate scene, but it's just kind of temporary because I don't use it very often. And then sound controls is to go deeper into sound controls, but we'll look into that in a little bit more. Right, so you can see me on stream. This is currently uh, scene three of all my scenes is the webcam one. So if I change it, for example, to scene two, I just pressed it on the touch portal there. I have my little animation. But I touch it on the touch portal and then it, it does what it does. It also changes the screen on the touch portal. This is another thing I have set up. Not only does that button change the scene to scene two, it also opens an entirely another page, which is all to do with everything to do with scene two. So I have game capture, display capture, window capture, webcam. Now these are all different bits of the scene I can turn on and off. Like for example, I can turn off my webcam and back on. Again, this is just me using the touch portal to do this. Same as if I wanted to show the display. Again, I can just tap the display capture and now you can see the display. I can turn it off, I can turn the webcam off, turn the webcam on. Same with game capture and the window capture. They're both different capture sources, which I use uh, depending on what I'm streaming and what I'm doing. Okay, so that's pretty much that bit explained. Again, we've got the same uh, sound icon, bottom left exactly the same. Uh, does the same thing as the other one did, mutes or unmutes all the audio sources. Then we have the separate audio sources, one called desktop, one called mic, one called discord. Again, those do exactly the same as the other one, but they're just separate. So if I can mute the mic, I can unmute the desktop. There again, toggles for mutes for the three different audio sources which I use. Again, sound controls, you'll see that that is on every page and it does just lead to the sound controls. Um, again, we'll look into those in a second. Uh, let me just explain what's left on the screen. So we've got Chrome Gimp editing. Now these were just three temporary ones that I used while I was creating the transition that you may have seen. If you want to see that transition again, let's just swap back. If we swap back, again, using the touch portal, dedicated device. We're gonna swap back to scene three, which is the webcam. Hello, I'm back on the webcam. So that's what back, that was a different transition. Again, a different transition I made. And you'll see that the screen has changed again. We'll get into that in a minute. So then we'll switch back to two. There's the transition. So while I was doing that on stream, making that, I had these three uh, GIMP Chrome editing. Post. I have these three GIMP Chrome and editing, which were just different screens, depending on whether I was doing photo editing, whether I was in Chrome or whether I was doing video editing. So again, they're kind of similar to the display capture, but they are temporary ones, which I do not use very often. So the last thing really to point out is on the side here, on the right hand side, we have the number of the other scenes. Now you'll see it goes one, three, four, five, because we're already on scene two. We don't need to be able to access scene two. So if we click one, like I just showed you, if we click three, it's gonna change the scene to scene three, which is the webcam, and also change the page to the third page for all the things to do with third scene. So let's just go through the only other thing that I haven't really explained on my touch portal is the sound controls. So if we click on sound controls, it opens up another page, which is to do with just controlling the sound. So again, these top three are the same as you saw in this last page. So desktop, mic, discord, they're the same. So they're exactly the same. They just mute or unmute. They toggle between the two, the different audio source that it's labeled for. Okay. Then we have a uh, desktop mic, Discord, all in green with a little plus next to the sound. All that does is uh, increase the volume of that like specific audio source. I can show you this better. So say if I'm, like I can see my audio source of my voice being picked up now because it's the only audio source I have on. But say if I, I can see that and I can see that the desktop audio for like the game is a little bit low, I can press on the plus desktop and it will increase the volume for that specific source. Uh, same again for the mic in the Discord. On the alternate side of that, the minuses with all the labels on decrease the sound of that specific audio source. Just so that I can sort of manage my audio levels on the fly a little bit easier. 
So that's on every single page because it could be it could be useful on every single page I have. Um, but that's pretty much all I have to show you about this. I have created here what is effectively, I think personally, a much more useful Stream Deck alternative. Not only, like I showed you, can it be used for streaming and it can be used insanely well, and you can do it for at least half the price of a Stream Deck, buying brand new hardware, brand new tablet, it's still gonna cost you half as much. I spent 60 pounds total, including two stands, for a tablet, two stands, and then I hooked Touch Portal up to it. It just works, it works well. I wanna remind you that Touch Portal can be used for anything. Hotkeys, it can run applications, it can run files, it can run a shortcut, it can open a folder, it can navigate to a page, open a URL, input text, uh, set a timer, lock the computer, shut the computer. It's got media functions, it's got OBS, XSplit, Streamlabs OBS, Twitter, Twitch. It has all of these things. Like I have my photo editing stuff on there. I can have the hotkeys for photo editing, for video editing, for whatever you're doing. You can have them programmed into here to use them. It isn't just for streaming. Obviously streaming is a large focus of Touch Portal and it is a big point, but it's not limited to that, which I want to point out. You know what? I love Touch Ball. I love the guys there. I'm so glad that we were able to work on this. It's so cool. It's really, really cool. I love, I genuinely love the service. I wouldn't make so many videos about it and I wouldn't look at trying to do some sponsored content like this if I genuinely didn't believe in the service, in the product that they're providing. Last thing I wanna say, let's talk about the price. So like I said, this tablet cost me 50 pounds, brand new. Now you could totally get a cheaper one. This is one of the best things, I think. Obviously, I'm doing this to show you that I can buy a brand new 10 inch tablet. It's not a massive, it's not a name brand one, but it's a nice, fully working 10 inch tablet, brand new, and it still costs half as much as a Stream Deck. But here's the thing. If you've got an old tablet lying around, if you have an old phone lying around, it's gonna cost you nothing and you can set it up. As long as it's within the specification, you know, listed on Touch Portal's website, of devices that will be able to run Touch Portal, you might have an old tablet that you weren't using anyway, and it's a great second use for that tablet. It's a great use. It costs you nothing to do, and you're gonna end up with a device which is, in my opinion, better than a Stream Deck, and has saved you 100 plus pounds or dollars. And you end up with, with a better experience, with amazing developers who are continuing to work on it, and are doing a great job of always implementing new stuff and listening to the community. So there's that aspect. It can be completely free. You can get a Stream Deck alternative for absolutely free and it would be a dedicated device that you would have next to you when you stream. It's, I mean, if you're okay with using your phone, just continue to do that. It's a great way. Personally, I would rather have a dedicated device that I use um, so that my phone can be separate and that's why I've done this. Like I said, if you have an old phone, an old tablet laying around, you can sort this out for like nothing. I just picked this tablet because it sounded good. It looked good. You can totally get a cheaper tablet. I, obviously your mileage may vary with what kind of tablet you buy. Obviously if you go out and buy like a really nice Samsung Galaxy tablet or whatever it is, then I'm sure that's gonna be great for you. Also, if you go out and buy a 20 pound unknown brand ships from Hong Kong tablet, who knows, it might be great for you, it might not. So it's up to you, but you can still go and spend like 80 pounds, $80 on a tablet, which would be a good tablet, just all, as a tablet alone to play games, to do whatever you wanna do on it. It's still cheaper than buying a Stream Deck and it's gonna run Touch Portal nicely, smoothly. It's gonna be, you're just gonna have no issues. Touch Portal works perfectly for me. Uh, it does what I need it to do. It does probably more than I need it to do. And I really love it. Like, it involves a little bit of setting up. You set up your buttons, you make sure it does what it wants to do. But I have mine set up in such a way that it just works. It just works perfectly. And now that I have this dedicated little tablet hub thing sat here next to me, I can just switch the scene when I want. I can just touch over and be like, oh no, we're gonna be right back screen. Oh no, oh wait, I need to go back to the webcam. And it just works. It works nicely, it's easy, it's simple. You don't have to think about it. I don't need the hotkeys on my keyboard anymore. 
it's all in here and more. Like I would not be able to fit this many commands onto my keyboard, it would get confusing, I would end up hitting them by accident. Having the touch portal as a separate, like dedicated device is amazing. I love it, I love it. So again, thank you Touch Portal for sponsoring this video. I super enjoyed making this. I would love to work with you in future on, on more sponsored content. Uh, I love what you do. You guys are cool and I, I just really appreciate it. So if you haven't already checked out Touch Portal, you should go check it out. I'll put a link in the description there where you can go check it out. Also, if you're having trouble setting it up, I have done a few videos in the past uh, explaining how it works and how to set it up and get it working with OBS and things. If that's something that you're also looking for, I'll put links in the description to that as well. Thank you guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope it's I hope it's given some of you you guys an idea and maybe you will go along the similar route. If you do do a similar thing to me and buy a tablet, please let me know. Uh, let me know on Twitter. I would be really excited to see what you guys can come up with and how your setups look. So thank you and I will see you guys next time.